yoga is Indian. Yet, yoga became cool when Westerners adopted it. Yeah, I will leave the rest for you to complete. <laughs> There's a fundamental approach to dissemination which I think maybe we are missing. This could be controversial, so be it. <laughs> so <laughs> Storytelling is inherent to human nature and human society. And there are very few societies which are exceptions to the tradition of storytelling. But if storytelling were to then have the purpose of converting the rest of the world to your point of view, then marketing is second habit. Okay? So therefore, if you subscribe to a faith system which does for 10 rupees but believes in showing for 100 rupees, okay? Then effectively, it becomes part of your collective psyche, your social DNA. Whereas if you come from a culture which says that even if you do for a thousand rupees, keep your mouth shut, right? That's why I made the point of underplaying previously. Because you see this as duty and you don't see this as a means of attracting people to a particular fold. You're doing it for its own sake. Which is why today dharma is forced to compete with those ideologies which are so fundamentally different even in their approach to rights and duties that you're forced to think of how do I create a narrative? How do I create an ecosystem? How do I make myself cool? How do I spread the language? How do I spread the message? That's where the problem is. Now, what does this mean? Either the other fellow must have, let's say, the conscience to learn that this is not the way to go about it, or you're forced to Abrahamize to some extent in terms of marketing. It's a very hard decision to make because you are cutting corners at some level, okay? Now, let's go to the next thing. So, that's one element. The second element is you have to realize that what we think of our failures in terms of disseminating our culture and so on and so forth, making it cool, is a post-1947 phenomenon, not before that. One man went to the West and revolutionized it. Gandhi. Oh, sorry, not Gandhi, Vivekananda. Why Gandhi? Are you? No way. Not Gandhi. No, no, sorry. Rama Rama. <laughs> you did not have internet, you did not have technology, you had nothing. He goes there, audiences swoon all over the place with one dialogue. That's it. Okay? And then, literally door-to-door -door pravachanas is what gets the job done. What technology? Where is technology? What that tells you is technology is important provided there is a message to send and provided there is a conviction that the message has a purchase and that it is of some value and that you are willing to put yourself out to spread that particular message. Technology will then aid the process of dissemination. It is not the starting point. Now, Post-1947, or at least since the 1920s, if you have chosen to underplay your culture to the extent that you believe that you have nothing of value to offer, and that your entire society is a reform project for the West as well as for westernized Indians, not Bharatiyas, then you please tell me, where is the question of making an effort to spread the message? Each time you try to say something, someone will come and tell you, Mughals gave it. <laughs> From Biryani to Diwali, apparently the Mughals gave us. Whatever remains, the Christian gave us. Then what did they come here for? <laughs> but 
they apparently generated wealth, we are poor at generating wealth. Even that we are poor at. So what did they come here for, I don't understand. So what I'm trying to say is, when the issue of, let's say, dissemination or making culture is framed, I think we need to be even more precise in framing the problem. And framing the problem would also mean understanding the timeline in which you choose to frame that problem. So that's where an analytical or a mathematical approach comes into play. Because when someone makes a sweeping statement, that means you've effectively painted an entire history and let's say a 7,000 year journey at the very least with one brush, which does not hold valid at all. If there are coins dating back to the Roman period, which are in Vault A of the Sri Padmanabha Swami temple, how is that even possible? If you had business, if you had trade, culture flows along with trade. Economics and culture go hand in hand to a significant extent. They have an economic incentive to understand your culture, you have an economic incentive to understand their culture, this happens. So the existence of trade across the world with Bharat is proof of the fact that they had knowledge of our culture, okay? So I would say, the problem that we, we seek to analyze is a post-independence problem, which makes it all the more imperative to understand what happened post that particular period that makes us so diffident and let's say, uh, and, and, and let's say, why do we underplay it beyond what is required by our culture? Now the point is this, to underplay it is one thing, which is to say that you know its value, but you choose not to present it for reasons of modesty. But to believe that it has no intrinsic value of its own is not underplaying, is to dismiss and rubbish it. We are not underplaying it anymore. We are rubbishing it altogether, lock, stock and barrel. That's the distinction. The only way that you can hope to overcome this, I go back to my pet to topic, that you remove these layers which have buried your consciousness and then you realize where we come from. Now I'll give you a simple example. Mm. Each time, so during this uh, entire uh, Diwali controversy with respect to firecracker ban, I tried to present material before the Supreme Court, not just with respect to the religious traditions and let's say the ritual traditions surrounding the practice of bursting firecrackers, but to say that we have had this tradition even before Chinese invented, let's say, gunpowder or whatever it is, only to be laughed at by the Supreme Court. This reflects what the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, thinks of its own culture and its own contributions to science and whatnot. <laughs> and we were not citing WhatsApp literature or random literature. We were citing literature written by P.K. Gode, who is the legendary historian of Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute, who while being a librarian at Bori, wrote so many books, close to 600 articles, and multiple books, and he had collated information from Krishnadevaraya's period and what not, with none of them mentioning our blessed neighbors, unfortunate neighbors on this side, on the northeast. Nobody mentions them. Nobody mentions them. So that tells you that the root problem is perhaps in understanding history, because unless and until you actually have a sense of history, I think it's impossible for us to develop confidence as a society. Whatever confidence we have today is arrogance traceable to Western education, but not confidence which is traceable to our Indic knowledge or Indic origins. <laughs> so perhaps that's my analysis, but people can say he's stuck with coloniality and decoloniality. God save him and us. <laughs> Thank you. I like the way both of you are feeding into each other's questions.